hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise him because he's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to the King of kings and Lord of lords. How excellent is the name of our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. How great is our God. How great is his name. He's the greatest one forever the same. He rolls back the waters from the mighty Red Sea. And he says, I will lead you if you will trust in me. Hallelujah to our King. Hallelujah to our King. Lord, you are great and you are almighty. All honor, all praise, all glory to you, O King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O oh, 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 my soul. I worship your holy name. Sing like never before. O oh, my soul. I worship your holy name. I bless you, Lord, with all my soul, all my soul. I worship your holy name. I sing like never before, all my soul. I worship your holy name. Oh God, I worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. Hallelujah. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing our song again. Whatever may come. And whatever lies before us, let us be singing when the evening comes. So we bless you, Lord, with all our souls, all our souls. We worship your holy name. We sing it like never before. With all our souls, we worship your holy name. Lord, we worship your holy name. Yes, we worship your holy name. Bless the Lord with all my soul, with all our souls. We worship your holy name. Jesus, we worship you with all our souls. We worship your holy name. Oh Lord, we worship your holy name. Jesus, we worship your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We praise your name, O Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are awesome in this place and you are the almighty God. You are worthy of all praise. To you, our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to our King. Lord, you are great and you are almighty. All honor to you, O King. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome. Welcome into our presence. Welcome into our way. Welcome into our day. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We praise you. We honor you. And we declare that you are awesome in this place. You are the almighty God, and beside you there is no other God. Wow. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome. Take full control, Holy Spirit, all of you and none of us. Take our tongues and teach us what to say, our minds and teach us how to think. Let your spirit be upon us as the spirit of wisdom and understanding, as the spirit of counsel and might, as the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Glorify yourself in us and through us, Holy Spirit. 
magnify your name give us divine revelation divine manifestation divine insights and foresights oh holy spirit of god cause us to walk in the fullness of your goodness lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake and for even as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death cause us not to fear evil because we will be confident that you are with us and your rod and staff comforts us thank you holy spirit for the table that you have prepared before us in the presence of our enemies that you anoint our heads with oil daily and our cups run over surely the goodness and mercy of the lord follows us because of you by you holy spirit and we will dwell in the house of the lord through the sacrifice of yeshua on calvary's cross and so we thank you this morning O holy one of israel we ask that you will wash us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness every sin every evil everything that we have said or done knowingly or unknowingly we place before you this morning and we say have mercy lord cleanse us O god cleanse us O lord the, the the pastor said he was in the sin of lust and didn't realize because of how the anointing still flowed so many of us oh god are in different transgressions of your of your laws and don't even realize because it is done so secretly it is done so 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 undercover so incognito so different so insignificant but this morning i'm asking you lord jesus christ search every member of this family search us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet see if we have a little anger a little envy a little jealousy a little greed a little slothfulness a little unforgiveness a little pride a little fear a little lust a little immorality of any kind a little rebellion a little disobedience anything god almighty that is hidden anywhere in us anywhere no matter how small even smaller than a mustard seed this morning we ask you lord search us for these are difficult times these are end times and we want to be in right standing with you in righteousness holiness and truth we want to be in right standing with you walking according to your leading and not the leading of the enemy lord if there's but a little sin there's contamination within and we don't want that in us at all paul in his words in his writing says that we must be in a constant state of repentance it means that you will not tolerate sin in your presence so as we come into your presence past the gates of praise into your sanctuary we ask oh god that you will clean us cleanse us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet cleanse us of any contamination that the enemy injected into us as we slept oh god any demonic assignment any plot scheme or trap of the enemy any touch from any spirit husband or spirit wife any touch from any witch or warlock demon or devil principality or power ruler of darkness spiritual wickedness in high places anything that raises itself against the knowledge of you that has impacted us in any way lord jesus christ of nazareth we ask this morning for a cleansing and a purifying a sanctifying a fresh bath of your blood a fresh infilling of your spirit a fresh move of your glory in the name of the lord jesus christ for as we go out to war today O god we war for your glory and for your name's sake we war that you might be established in the hearts and minds of others as you are established in ours we war for you to be the conquering lion of the tribe of judah in the lives of those who do not yet know you we war that others may not have to david fought battles that solomon could live in a time of peace I thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that our children and our children's children will live in a time of peace because we have fought for your glory and for your name's sake. And so, Lord, make us mighty warriors for you, soldiers of the cross, glorious, wonderful, awesome, magnificent, efficient, effective soldiers of the cross. 
that our children and our children's children will live in the peace that we fought by your spirit and by and with your holy angels to accomplish for them let them live in peace of mind peace of will peace that righteousness holiness and truth brings peace O oh god father we pray this morning for the nation of israel for the nations in the middle east we pray for the muslim nations we pray for the nations all the nations of the seven continents of the world we pray O oh god almighty that you will visit in an uncommon way and bring peace as we pray for peace of israel peace of jerusalem as we pray, God Almighty, that stability will be returned to the Middle East. We pray, O oh God Almighty, that your will be done. Let only your will be done. Let not Lucifer and his friends and his, his emissaries say, Aha, where is your God? We pray for peace, O oh God. We pray for the peace of the Jewish state. We pray for the peace of those who are being bombed left, right, and center. We pray for the peace that will cause the children's lives to be saved. We pray for peace, O oh God. Peace, 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 peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May your peace prevail in Israel. May your peace prevail in Palestine. May your peace prevail in Congo, in Myanmar, in all the other places and spaces in Ukraine. <clears throat> Excuse me. May your peace reign, O Lord Jesus Christ. Peace. Peace. Peace, O Lord. Peace in our hearts as well. May your peace reign in our hearts, O God. For there are so many that are uncomfortable. There are so many that are disturbed. So many that see the news on the mainstream media. Watching children covered in blood. Watching women wailing, men wailing, buildings brought to rubble on all sides. And they are anxious and fearful. Some are anxious and fearful because they realize that the end times have started. Some are anxious and fearful for the lives of those who are being destroyed and even who have been destroyed already. But I pray, O oh God, that you will cause us to mature to the place where we don't get anxious or fearful, but we become resolute and prayerful. Resolute and prayerful. For the hearts of men have always been deceitful above all else and desperately wicked. And wicked hearts will do wicked things. I pray, O oh God, that the wicked hearts of those who are in leadership those who are in authority will turn, will change, will shift and become like the hearts of the kings and leaders of Nineveh when they heard from Jonah that God gave them 40 days to repent and turn. I pray, O oh God, that the hearts of our leaders, the leaders across the world, leaders of the WHO, leaders of the United Nations, leaders of the major nations of the world that are Im impacting, leaders of Russia, leaders O oh god almighty in china and in all of the arabic world leaders in north and south america leaders in europe leader in israel all the leaders in government in israel leaders in jamaica leaders in the rest of the caribbean leaders in australia leaders O oh god almighty that are leading their nations astray leading their nations down paths of unrighteousness unholiness untruth we pray for them this morning we pray for the leaders oh god who are embroiled in corrupt practices moral and unethical immoral and unethical practices we pray for them this morning oh god almighty we pray that a shift will take place Father, simply and insignificant in a nation like the United States where it's the land of the free and the home of the brave, freedom of religion, freedom to be and to do for, for, your, for your own good pleasure, where there is absolute and total freedom as long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of other people. 
we see where there is no freedom for Christianity, no freedom for those who believe in the Bible, no freedom whatsoever. A young man was playing a match, having been having recovered from great pain, great hurt and injury, and he realized that doctors couldn't save him, that human beings were not the reason why he's able to play football again. And after he scored his first, first touchdown, he sought to seek first your kingdom. He sought to honor you first before he celebrated the six points. And as he slid to his knee and gave thanks quietly, him, the referee, did a pre. And as he, he was there on his knee, there came a flag because the referee was a drag not a drag queen but a dragon a dragon representing the dragon Lucifer he did not understand that there was a freedom in the constitution that allows one to pray allows one to demonstrate their religious beliefs as long as it didn't interfere with what was going on nothing was going on yet because it seemed like a christian action the spontaneous response even against the rules the spontaneous response even against the rules the one who was meant to carry out or to protect the rules of the game lord jesus christ was the one who was breaking the constitutional rule no constitution law was being broken no football law was being broken but the heart of the dragon was so evident that this person being given the authority to manage the law and the rules and regulations of the game went outside of that mandate because of a christian move that's how much so many people innately hate you lord jesus and what you stand for your word your people your worship they hate you lord jesus but it is not deliberate it's out of ignorance it's negative influence it's satanic influence and hypnosis and so lord we pray for mercy for those who do not know better we pray for mercy that that referee, O oh God Almighty, who is a symbol of the authority and the authoritarian systems that have been set to come against you. We pray for the ignorance of those who fight against Christianity in, the, in ignorance. They do not know that we represent love. We represent restoration, reconciliation. We represent the one who comes to give life and life more abundantly. We represent forgiveness. We represent peace, temperance, long-suffering. We represent righteousness, holiness, and truth. And so anyone who sets their heart to fight against these things that are, are supposed to be the pillar of every society must be under an influence that does not even connect to human intelligence, human understanding, human moral values. There's a disconnect and it must be demonic. It must be satanic. Because no normal human being in their right mind, even if they don't agree, even if they don't want to pursue a life of righteousness, holiness and truth, a life that will cause them to live a life more abundantly, even if they do not want to worship you, Lord Jesus, they could easily see that there's no need to pray when we get on our knee. And so we will see what will happen. We pray for that referee and his family and all those other referees who agreed with that penalty of unsportsmanlike conduct. Can you believe it, Lord? Unsportsmanlike conduct. Conduct unbecoming of a sportsman. That's what it means. An action similar to when you punch someone in the face during the game or during a, a timeout, a break. 
a celebration that taunts or flaunts or disgraces the opponents. That's what unsportsmanlike conduct penalty is all about. When did prayer, when did a silent prayer, when did honoring our God become an unsportsmanlike conduct? People of God, we have to open our eyes and see that they're coming at us from the north, south, east, and west. They're coming at us in the land of the free and the home of the brave. They're coming at us through all of Europe, all of Africa, all of the Middle East, all of Asia. They're coming at us from down under. They're coming at us from the Caribbean. They're coming at us and all in their intent is to squeeze the very life out of everything that represents Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We have no friends outside of Jesus. We have no friends outside of the kindred spirit of one spirit crying out to another. Do not think that your member of parliament, that your senator is on your side. Do not think for a minute that they will support you. Yes, Sister Karen, Coco Goff prayed after she won and it became a big kerfuffle, a big hullabaloo. If they could ban her from tennis, they would. People of God, we are under siege just for praying but it's not new the disciples after Pentecost were pursued persecuted they were pursued and persecuted some were fed to lions some were used as sport in the arenas now they want to stop us from praying. They want to stop us from, from reading our word, the word of God. They want to stop us from declaring the word of God. They want to stop us, period. They rip up our Bible, throw it on the ground. They call us loveless. They call us bigots. Everything that is evil, they call us everything except a child of God. But we're still in a good place we're still in a good place i know it feels uncomfortable for some of us but we're still in a good place why because those that went before us our predecessors were fed to lions you saw what happened to daniel had it not been for the grace of god and the angels he assigned to shut the lion's mouth daniel's story would have stopped would have ended and the day he was put in the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's story would have ended the day they were placed in the fiery furnace. But it continued by the grace of God. Many, many were persecuted and died. And their stories ended at the hand of evil men, evil hearts. And so we are in the, th the same type of atmosphere with the same spirit. But because of Christ Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, because of so-called modern times, it is not as easy to kill us, to throw us to the wolves. But they want to imprison us. More than anything else, they want to shut our mouths. They want to change our confession. They want to stop us from speaking truth. They want, us to, they want to stop us from saying, Thus saith the Lord. They want to stop us from confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's the aim. Why do you think no other religion is under pressure? Why do you think no other religion whatsoever, regardless whether it's Satanism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Muslimism, Krishnaism, co-worship, moon worship, sea worship, human worship, car worship, house worship. No other worship or associated religion is under pressure. None. In the modern dispensation, we have launched no wars. We have sought to fight against no one. 
Yes, there has been some issues like everybody else because Christians are humans and humans are Christians. There have been some issues. There are some people who have come in like ravenous wolves. There are persons, there are people who have come in and even gotten to the pulpit who have been wolf in sheep clothing, who have been demons dressed as angels of light, of course, and they have cast a bad shadow. But where have there not been? Which religion, which denomination, which nation have there not been those who pretend to be one thing and are not? And so should we alone be persecuted for something that is natural across all people? But we are. When a Christian makes a mistake, when a pastor makes a mistake, it makes headlines. How could he? He's supposed to. They know what we're supposed to represent. They know what Jesus died and left for us. They know it. That's why they are able to persecute us in such great ways whenever we make a mistake. Because they're saying, as a Christian, you are not supposed to do this, not supposed to do that. You're supposed to love. You're supposed to. They want to dictate the rules. Yet, when we do it, when we live up to that standard by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Ghost, they still want to marginalize us. They still want to shut us down, shut us up. They still want to imprison us. They still want to remove our Bibles. They still want us not to pray or to confess that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. I say this to you on this precious morning, not for you to be downcast or sad or anxious or fearful, but for you to realize that just going about business as usual has long passed. Gone are the days when being a Christian is business as usual. Gone are those days. These days we have to pray harder, more intently, more directly, more pointedly, more specifically, because they're coming after us like they came after the disciples 2,000 years ago like they went after Jesus because our agenda is different our mandate is different our playbook is different and so you are going to feel uncomfortable people of God but our comfort is not our comfort or discomfort is not in what men do or say. Our comfort or discomfort is in the decision of the Lord Jesus Christ in whose hand we are. Amen. And so Lord, we place everything that is us in everything that is you today afresh. We say, Lord Jesus, strengthen us for the journey ahead. Strengthen us for the persecution that will come. Strengthen us, O oh God, that we will not flinch, that we will not run or look to the right or to the left when the storms come, when people even in our family begins to speak negatively against us. Father, may every tongue that rise against us in judgment be condemned in the mighty name of Jesus. May every weapon that forms against us in boardrooms, in, 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 in management meetings, in supervisors, meetings. May every weapon, O oh God, that has formed against us uh, in governmental offices, uh, by governmental decrees, uh, Father, may they not be successful against us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, may we stand resolute. Uh, and Lord, if and when you allow anything to happen to us, uh, may it be a joy and an honor for us to suffer for your name's sake, uh, to persevere in the midst of the difficulties. Uh, Father, may we stand resolute, uh, set our faces like flint uh, by your spirit. Uh, may we be bold and very courageous like Joshua. Father, may we be, O oh God, like Samuel, uh, where none of our confessions fall to the ground and wither away. Uh, may we be like David's 30 men of valor, elite with the sword of the spirit, uh, fighting against the demonic forces. Uh, oh God Almighty, may we be like Paul. Uh, oh God, may we be strong in every situation. Uh, may we give thanks in every situation and circumstance. 
May we worship in the midst of our pain. God, may we be like Peter, who thought it not robbery, O God, to stand in the presence of the of the jailers uh, and to say yes i will suffer for your name's sake uh, i will continue to preach and teach uh, god may we be like hosea willing to do whatever you you say we're to do regardless of how it makes us feel and look on the outside uh, god may we be like ezekiel uh, committed to honoring you to send the word to your people regardless of what price we have to pay Oh God Almighty, may we be like you, Lord Jesus. May we be like you to say what we hear you say and to do what we see you do, that we might do even greater works in the days and the times and the seasons to come. Father, we desire to walk in the fullness of your goodness. We desire to be anointed sons that you can trust. We in this family, oh God, desire to be those that walk in the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. We desire to say what we hear you say and to do what we see you do, to go about doing good, to be resolute even when we persecute, to be strong even when others around us are wrong. May we be who you desire for us to be, O God, anointed sons that you can trust. For these are the times when our conviction, our faith, our hope in you will be challenged like never before. We desire more, much more of you to be evident in us and through us, O Lord Jesus. Let it be so according to your will and for your purpose in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah thank you lord thank you jesus thank you lord thank you thank you lord jesus hallelujah to our king hallelujah to our king hallelujah to our king hallelujah bless the lord thank you jesus Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. A different kind of prayer this morning, talking to the Lord, praying traditionally, but talking non-traditionally as well, because so much is happening, so much is happening in the world, so much is happening in our lives, in our situations, in our circumstances. So many things are at play, but Jesus is God anyway. Amen. And so we continue to persevere. We continue to pursue the presence of the Lord. We continue to ask him to keep us in perfect peace as he has promised. For he says his word shall not fall to the ground, but shall go forth and accomplish what it was sent forth to accomplish. All we have to do is speak his word and it will come to pass. All we have to do is speak his word, people of God, and it will come to pass as promised. God says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Do not believe anything else. Do not believe to the end of rejection, abandonment, low self-esteem, no self-love, thoughts of suicide, thoughts of anxiety and fear. Those thoughts only come to those who do not believe or accept that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord and that he died on the cross to make us fearfully and wonderfully. There are some tough things that we will have to accept in this season as life becomes more difficult, as more and more people begin to despise us, as more and more people seek to fight against us, seek to disagree with us, as more and more people study how to be detractors of what we believe it becomes more and more important for us to be confident in who our God is not who we are for who we are will not make it who he is is what will preserve us in who we are to be amen 
and so it's difficult i remember yesterday after church i had a meeting with a, a, a gentleman and he asked me the question a question that was tough a question i cannot say that when it was asked i knew how to answer it i knew the answer but the holy spirit gave me an answer that was not necessarily pleasant it wasn't necessarily pleasant he was saying when we become troubled when we become uh, deeply rooted in negativity in pursuing a way a lifestyle an action a way of thinking or speaking that is not of God basically if I remember correctly it was how do we help someone like this what causes it is this just demonic is this just us needing to perform deliverance on this person and they will be set free and even someone who believes in and performs by the Spirit of God deliverance on a regular basis to persons recognize hallelujah Good morning brother junior recognize that it is not always about what Satan is doing or has done it is not always about that especially if the person or persons have received countless amounts of deliverance there comes a time people of God and I say this with the greatest of love and respect and admiration for those who are trying I say this for those who are in difficult situations and circumstances and are trying in their minds to get out of it but are seemingly in quicksand of issues and are sinking I say this in great consideration and empathy to those who know differently but are not seem are not seeming to be able to do it I'm not condemning you I'm not I'm not um, casting any aspersions or pretending that I am better than anyone else because I too need to hear and understand in a lot of instances the issues are not demonic they're soulish in a lot of instances the things that we are doing people of God the decisions that we're making the ways we're going about living the rebellious cantankerous confrontational proud fearful doubting rejected abandoned low self-esteem low self-worth low self-love a lot of times those things started out in our lives as demonic but we have gone and gotten deliverance we've gone and gotten help we've gone and gotten counseling and we're saying it not it's not working I still get angry when someone when there's a disagreement I still get frustrated I still become annoyed I still am visiting my ex-boyfriend or my ex-girlfriend I still am doing things that I shouldn't do how do I what do I do pastor what do I do pray that the fear of God be your portion pray that the fear of God come upon you in such a way that like Joseph you will run or shun the very appearance of evil for too many of us not all because some have not been delivered from the influence that they were born in and shaped by yes they have come to Christ yes they have started to try to walk they read the Bible and pray and they go into church regular but that which was contaminating their soul that which had them under control has not been broken they have not been fully set free they have been healed but they have not been made whole come on somebody amen the lepers were healed but only one was made whole ten lepers were healed but only one was made whole can I talk to somebody this morning and so there are many Christians who are like the nine lepers who have gone have started going to church but they have not been made whole they've started praying and worshiping and watching um, church on TV they're watching their favorite preachers 
Joel Holstein and Bishop T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar and Apostle Joshua Selman and Prophet this and Prophet that and they're watching all these people and they feel like they're Christians and they're saved and they are in a lot of instances but they have not been made whole. Wholeness is when Satan no longer has control of your soul. Can you make a note of that? So that you can be you can you can look to see when there is consistent sin, when there is something within that has not yielded to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, when there is an issue in our heart, an issue of rejection, an issue of frustration, an issue of low self-esteem, an issue hallelujah that causes every time that issue is challenged, that issue arises, that issue of lack of self-control, that issue. That makes you have to say, I'm not there yet. I, ha I keep having to go back to the well of sin. Where there is that issue. It's either an issue of will. Or an issue of spill. Or maybe an issue where we just need to chill. There are issues that we as Christians are going through. And the answer is not in deliverance. The answer is in fasting. Fasting to become one with God. Fasting for flesh to die. Because flesh or soul is more dominant than spirit. And the Bible says it. No need to feel condemned. The Bible says that the soul wrestles against the spirit. Even after we have gotten saved. Our souls wrestle against our spirit, trying to find a place, trying to find a balance. Can I tell you there is no balance? There is no balance in God. There is no balance in God. That means in God, in us. There is only one way, God's way. There is only one leader, one ruler, one dominator. And that's the spirit of the living God. There is no... I get some of what my soul wants and God gets some of what his spirit wants. There is no balance like that in God. Because our soul desires nothing that is good. Our soul desires nothing that is good. If we seek first for our soul to come in unison, in oneness with our spirit, then all will be added unto us. And so if our soul desires something outside of what our spirit is able to give, then there is no balance. There's an imbalance. An imbalance means that there are times when our soul leads and there's time, there are times when our spirit leads. If you are in a marriage, woman of God, if, there are, if you are in a marriage, woman of God, man of God, and there's a time, whether it's half of the month, two weeks out of the month, the wife leads. She takes all the decisions. She determines what happens. And then the other two weeks, the man leads and determines what happens. That's not balance. That's a house in disorder. Every house i.e. even the house of God requires a unified dual commitment and covenant in order to accomplish all that needs to, to be accomplished however there is only one leader there is only one ruler there is only one authority I know some of the purists and some of the feminists are, 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 are cringing right now, but fighting with the spirit and saying, Lord, I know what he's saying is true. I know that I see it in the Bible. I know that I see it. I, but God, uh, I, I don't know. Because I like to be in charge. I like to dictate. I like to, to, to say what is. I, I, I like to be even part-time ruler. Some were meant to be in charge and some were meant to support those who are in charge. You can still rule 
while you serve. Jesus did it. Jesus said, I came not to be served, not to, to serve, not to be served, but to serve. Sorry. Yet he was the leader. He was serving, but he was the leader. He was serving, but he was impacting. Come on, guys, we have to learn. Be smart. Ladies, I didn't make the rules. God made the rules that the man is supposed to be the head. Don't try to take over headship. Learn how to strategically make the head go and think and believe that what they're doing is their idea and their, 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 their wisdom and their knowledge, but it's really yours. You don't need to get the kudos and the pat on the back. You just, know, you just need to know that because of you, your house has favor. Because of you, your family has grace. Because of you, your family is exceeding expectations, skyrocketing. That's all you need, the comfort of knowing that because you submit and surrender to who God is and what God requires. Your husband, your father, your brother, whoever is in charge for the time being, is going in the right direction, accelerating, and the family is being blessed as a result. The moment you want the spotlight, the moment you want to always be right, is the moment your day becomes night and you're in a plight because it's not right. I didn't make the rules. I'm not, even to, I'm not even trying to enforce the rules um, from a draconian perspective or an authoritarian perspective. I'm just saying it's the same way in the spirit. It's the same way in the spirit, guys. But if we don't learn it in the natural, how can we truly, 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 truly say we have it in the spirit? Because the evidence of us not having it in the spirit is the evidence that too many times our soul, our souls take over and want to rule over God's spirit that is in us. Oh, I want this and that's that. Oh, I just ignore the Holy Spirit. He was telling me not to eat that ice cream, but I just ignore him. At that moment, you become the boss. At that moment, you become God. At that moment, you are the authority and nothing will risk or wrestle that authority from you. There are too many times when we as believers are the ones in charge when God is supposed to be in charge at all times. But it is predominantly because we hardly ever know how to treat with authority in the natural. We've been so hurt and abused and confused by the illegitimate authorities that come in the natural that we said, you know what, I have to look out for myself. And so things like I can do bad all by myself becomes a mantra, becomes a billboard for women. I can do bad all by myself. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? But that, what, that's, that has happened because Satan has infiltrated and contaminated the leadership of men. Men no longer lead according to the, the Spirit of God. They lead according to greed, to soulish desires. And so women who are supposed to support the leadership, be help meet, help the thing to prosper, to succeed, that they will get the prosperity and success as well. They will become the favor source for men have sought now to come out from under the tyranny, under the abuse, and take over as the leader, as the head, as the one in charge. And that's where the problem comes. That's where the problem comes. Ladies, as long as there is a man in the building, as long as there is a man in your life, you are not in charge. You can be in control. Shh. <laughs> Shh. 
Don't tell them I said so. You can be in control if you're smart and humble enough. If you're smart enough and humble enough, you can be in control. But the moment you begin to demonstrate qualities of wanting to be in charge, things are going to crumble. If you want to dictate what happens instead of making it happen behind the scenes, then that's where the problem comes. And that's what a lot of women today have not understood. You don't have to be in charge, but you need to be in control. You don't have to be in charge, but you need to be in control. And it is easy to be in control, but it's a battle to be in charge. To be in charge is gonna cause headbutting. To be in control is just relinquishing your soul and being led by your spirit. So what we've been fighting each other for, ladies and gentlemen, is so easy to accomplish, is not, e not funny. Without a fight, without a battle. Ladies, hear me. Being in control is way more productive than being in charge. Hear me carefully. I'm going to say it again. Being in control is way more productive than being in charge. When you're in charge, a lot of men will end up saying, all right, go ahead now. Do it yourself. Do it. Okay. Do it. And you're going to come upon things that you can't do. When you're in control, it's just like with Jesus. You're in control by your prayer. You're in control by your, your, your knowledge. You're in control by your fasting. You're in control when you are not in charge. We often are in charge. We tell God what to do. And when God doesn't do what we want him to do because we told him, God, I need a husband this year. God, I need a financial breakthrough now. God, I need... The, God, and you're bossing God around like he's some kind of... What? No. When you're in control, you relinquish your soul. I say, Lord, I am your child. Your word says those who look to you those who know that you are in charge are radiant and their faces will never be covered with shame. Lord Jesus, your word says that you will never leave me or forsake me. Your word says when I go through difficult times, your rod and staff will comfort me. That you have prepared a table before me, therefore I should never be hungry. Your word says that you will cause me to be lavishly eating of the good things of life in the presence of my enemies. Your word says you anoint my head with oil. Your word says you are my good shepherd and you lead me in the pastures that are green. You lead me beside still waters that are clean. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Woo! I feel the presence of God. That's when you're in control. You make him feel good. You say, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I honor you. You are boss. You are king of kings and lord of lords. How excellent you are, oh God, in all the earth. That's demonstrating control. Not being in charge. When we try to be in charge, God steps back. And I'm saying to you, ladies in particular, this is not about ladies now. Don't miss it, please. Don't, don't let Satan start speaking in your ears and saying, oh, come pastor picking on ladies. No, I'm trying to make life better for all involved. Amen. So some ladies who are hearing me now would say, but pastor, what if the man is not carrying the mantle? What if the man is not doing what he's supposed to do? What if the man not, 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 that's not your business. Please take it the way I mean it from a sincere heart of love. That's not your issue. When one, when each other, whether it's on the male side or the female side, when we begin to focus on ourselves, when we, we begin to focus on becoming our best self in the role that God has given us, because 99% of the time when we're complaining that the wife is not doing what she's supposed to, being who she's supposed to, it is often as a result of you not being or doing what you are supposed to. And it is triggering a need 
to be in charge rather than in control. And the same thing, woman of God, hear me carefully. No time for offense now. When you find yourself struggling and suffering and, 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 um, and not accomplishing outside of the fact that you may have married someone out of your soul rather than the, by the leading of the spirit, that aside, I'm going to assume that you are a submitted woman of God and you married according to God's will and purpose. So that's not an issue. A lot of times when, 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 when if you find, if you go back, just rewind the tape and look at your life from the outside, you will find that a lot of the issues that you are facing is because you yourself have not submitted to God's authority, to God's direction. You want to take dominion. You want to be the authority instead of just being in control. When you are in control, you get things done without taking over. Auntie Pat will tell you that anything she wants her husband to do, he will do not because she order him, not because she said, don't do that, don't go there. Auntie Pat and Uncle Aston are always dressed so nicely, unified and matched and awesome. And it's not because she says, um, husband, you must wear this, wear this, do this, do she don't have to boss him up. She just nice him up. And then in nicing him up, come on, take, 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 take some, take some hints from the ones who who have done it and who have who have been successful at doing it. She doesn't demonstrate that she's in charge of him, but she controls him by letting him be in charge. Come on, somebody. Learn from the older women. She controls him by letting him be in charge. So he's in charge. And he feels like, yes, I'm wearing this outfit and matching with my wife because I want to. And she's going, yeah, thank you, Jesus. He doesn't even know that I am controlling. I'm controlling the situation. I'm, I'm, I'm directing, but from the back seat. You don't always have to be in front. Because in front requires some special gifts and skills that God has given to the men. And in front is not a literal position, guys. It's not that the man is out there and you are behind him. No. God made us beside each other. But he just gave us, gave us different roles. And if we don't know how to carry out our roles, then the wrong person will try to go in front be it the male or the female because if the man steps out in front and thinks that he is superior to the woman then there are some things that's going to come to him that the favor of the woman being beside him would have protected him from and he's going to get into problems and if the woman do the same thing there are some protections and some coverings that she would get from the man being beside her that she will now come in contact with and have problems because she's out there exposed. Can I give you a biblical example? Um, um, Uriah. Uriah? Yes, Uriah was one of the best warriors in all of Israel. He couldn't die as long as he was fighting with the, with the army of Israel. But when his wife Bathsheba fell into sin with the King David, the only way to kill Uriah the only way for Uriah to die was for those who he was fighting with, fighting beside, to back away and leave him out front. As great a hey, Jesus, come on now, people of God. Are you getting this in your spirit? Are you getting this in your spirit, people of God? The only way for Uriah to die was for him to face the enemy by himself. So the instruction was not to kill him, but to let him fight alone. If you're in a marriage or you plan to get married soon or whenever God releases you, the moment you begin to fight alone or the moment you say, all right, let her go on, let him go on, I will just stay at the back. I will just watch. 
that's the moment you have sub you you have um relegated or submitted that person to death row because no man is an island no one stands alone the faith the fate that uriah faced is the fate that we will all face if we try to go it alone and i'm saying to you going it alone often means feeling like we need to control the thing we need to be in charge uriah didn't die because he wanted to be in charge he died because someone who is in charge told those who were supporters to back up and he couldn't manage the enemy alone none of us can manage the enemies of our souls of our family alone none of us can we need that person but that person needs to be beside us because if they're behind us we're in the same position as Uriah but if they're beside us then we're in the position like David and we will live to a ripe old age despite our battle scars and we will live together we will be victorious together we will share the spoils together but we have to do it together amen hallelujah he who have ears to hear let him hear what the spirit of the lord has said this morning including myself i have heard you lord may i never be like one who think I can do it alone. May I always depend on my help meet. Because that's when it's really sweet. That's when both of us together can do it. That's when we are complete. Amen. And so, ladies, if you have, that's right, if you have a call and a purpose, if your anointing is spiritual and your husband's anointing is natural, like a dear sister of mine, she's called by God to go to travel even across the world and to do great things for God. And her husband is the stay-home king. He's the stay-home king. He's the one that runs the business and do stuff and, 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 and take care of things. While well, she's the minister, she's the one that goes and, and declares the love of Jesus and, 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 and prophesy and heal the sick and all these things. But the moment she thinks that the call of God that is on her life is more important than the role that God has given her husband to play, that's the moment her anointing bottles start to decrease. That's the moment the anointing in her bottle starts to decrease. And she finds that she starts to get less and less uh, activities, less and less uh, uh, glory coming forth as she travels and go to the places. Because she looks down on the one who is in charge. Because he's not doing the same things that she's doing. He's not as anointed. He's not as powerful. He doesn't pray as much. He doesn't spit word as much. But he's holding down his end as king. And he gives his blessing as priest. Please don't make that mistake in thinking that because the call of God for a Deborah anointing, the call of God for a Catherine Kuhlman anointing is on your life and you're going about doing everything. That because the spiritual things are more important than the natural life, that you can just make decisions and go anywhere and ag agree to any um, assignment. Oh, I have to fly to England today. And your husband know when the ticket has been booked, the confirmation has been given. Come on. And you're leaving the next day. Oh, honey, I'm going to England tomorrow. Your husband don't even know your agenda. He just knows on the day you call him to say, can you pick me up at the airport? That means you're in charge. You're not in control. You're in charge. You are dictating and dominating and declaring and doing whatever you want to do. And I'm saying to you, pretty soon you will notice that the same anointing that you started out with is dwindling and dwindling because 
The anointing comes from being in control, not in charge. Your anointing is preserved by you being in control, not in charge. Can I teach somebody something this morning? Whether you're in that position now and need to make an adjustment or you will be in that position in the future and need to start out and finish right. Do not try to be in charge, woman of God. Be in control. Big difference. Big difference. Your husband may not want you to go somewhere because he has something else to do, another plan. But because you submit your plan to him early and you say, babes, this is something exciting. This is something I believe will help me to grow, will help me to become the best, will help me to, 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 to launch the ministry in a greater way, to, to do X, Y, Z. And you make your case and you're making your case, um, putting him in charge, letting him feel like if he says no, you're not going to go. But the way you put it to him controls his response even before he responds so he was about to tell you babes we're gonna do this this weekend but before he could speak you tell him what this is put it to him make him feel like he has the position and the authority which he does to shut it down and say no this is what we're doing but he doesn't because you control the situation by being humble you control the situation by being transparent you control the situation by being in control. But too many, too many of our women, because of anointing, because of education, because of, of experience, because of all kinds of different things, because of pride, because of fear sometimes, self-assuredness, inadvertently in some instances, and directly in others want to be in charge in charge or should I say charge and control are spelled with the same first word first letter C and they can easily be mixed up they can easily be confused but I'm telling you as a woman it is better to be in control than in charge I give you a practical example. Most senior vice presidents, presidents, CEOs, um, C COOs, top, 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 top executives of companies will tell you if they so desire, if they choose to be honest, will tell you that the person who runs the company is their who? I hear some people saying it in the spirit. Their secretary their executive assistant without their executive assistant they can accomplish nothing nothing guys and who 99% of the time is their executive assistant a female who 99% of the time is in control their administrative assistant or executive assistant they get the glory they get to go to the board meetings they get to get the big salaries they get all the kudos. Forbes Fortune 500 puts their picture on the cover. But I'm telling you, they would not be on the cover of that magazine had it not been for their executive assistant. But Satan has whispered in the ears of too many women and tell them, you don't need to make no man great. You are the one that needs to be on the cover. And are there going to be some women on the covers? Of course. Of course, but I'm saying if God gave you a man that is supposed to be on the cover, but Satan tells you that you need to be on the cover, you better tell him go directly back to hell. Do not pass. Go do not collect 200. Because if you go on the cover where your husband is supposed to be, if you as the administrative assistant or the executive um, assistant wants to be the one on the Fortune 500 cover instead of your boss, the only thing you're going to get is fired. And other opportunities may miss you because it's, it, it's become hard for you to be hired. So we have to understand and know our position. 
we have to know our position. Amen? If you are working in an atmosphere where you are the president as a female and you are surrounded by other males, your best bet to be successful for long periods of time is not to demonstrate that you are the boss, but to demonstrate that you are in control. Control the men as a female and you'll benefit as the boss. Control the men as a help meet and you'll benefit more as the boss, as the one in charge. But if you are dismissing and, 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 and ordering and causing the, 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 the male virtue that God has given to them to be subdued, then they won't support you and help you and stand with you and beside you as they should. And if you're out there on your own, like Uriah, you will die. Like Uriah, you will die. Let it be said that none that has heard me this morning die because they want to be in charge when someone else should be. We must know and identify our position. Some will be in charge and some will be in control. There are some women that will be in charge. That's just the nature of things. I have no issue with that. No issue whatsoever. If you are in charge, you have to be wise enough to know God has put me in charge. But because I'm female, my in charge is not executed the same way that a male in charge executes. My in charge means that I stay in charge by focusing on control. Listen, these are very, very valuable, expensive life lessons that you're getting for free. I'm not asking you to dumb down. I'm not asking you to dress down. I'm not asking you to pretend like those who you're supposed to be in charge of are in charge of you. I am not asking you to do that. Let me set the record straight. No need to get all off. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm asking you to demonstrate the wisdom of God. To demonstrate the wisdom of God and to operate as how God would want you to operate, being led by the Spirit. You will accomplish so much more if you lead by being in control. Because when you are in control, it means that the Holy Spirit is in charge. Amen? And He tells you what to do, and you do it, and you accomplish. And everybody says, yay! And they stay beside you, and you continue to win wars. The same thing for the men. Men, though you are in charge in a lot of instances, maybe in most instances, you stay in charge by how much interaction you allow for the woman to have beside you to control. A successful man has a good executive assistant. Every successful man has an awesome, supernatural executive assistant. Every single one. You check. Mark Zuckerberg will tell you he has an executive assistant. Every single one of them, every billionaire, multi-billionaire, millionaire, um, top company executives, both in small countries and large, if you check, one of the key to their success is not their economic and, 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 and um, accounting and uh, marketing and business savvy and skill. That has its place and its role in its separate situation. But it is the one beside them, the one that knows all the secrets, the one that reminds them, sir, tomorrow is your wife's birthday. I've already ordered um, a bouquet. I've already booked 
uh, the, 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 um, the hotel for the, for, the, for the weekend. I've already um, ordered a, a gift for her. I've already ordered for, for you guys to get manicures and pedicures and massage. And he's like, God, what would I do without you? I didn't even remember. I was so busy. I didn't even remember. You are so amazing. When you know that you are not in charge, you are in control, your benefits and blessings come from making the one in charge always look good. Always look good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A motivational lesson, a motivational encouragement from the Holy Spirit for all of us this morning. When you're in charge, it's a big responsibility. Make sure you take care of, listen, admit to, apologize, submit. Often, thoughts and ideas to the one in control. When you're in control, always remember that control doesn't mean you are in charge. Control doesn't mean you are in charge. And often we make that mistake, both men and women. We get some measure of control and we begin to do things that we think the one in charge should just accept and, do and say nothing to. Sometimes you are going to present something along the same lines of what was approved last week and this week it won't be approved this week it won't be approved this week he will say babes no we have a family weekend planned you cannot go to california you cannot go to australia you cannot go to england but it is the lord's work and i have to go and how come you didn't have that position last week okay so now you want to be in charge where you're supposed to be in control. Yes, it's the Lord's work, but you think God, it catch God by surprise that the man of God is saying, no, that, that's not happening this week. This weekend, we as a family, you've been gone seven weekends in a row. Your children have not seen you. Sometimes he's not going to say all of that. He's just saying, remember, I am in charge. And so I'm saying to you, this weekend, we're going... And the family thing, what he expects is that as one beside him, as one who is only in control, not in charge, that you will say, Lord, you knew that this was coming. You knew I wasn't going to be able to go to Australia or to England or to Germany for this particular weekend. And so I will just call them and tell them I'm not available and enjoy spending the weekend with my family. You know what that does? When you prove to your husband or you prove to your wife that you are able to just submit to the one in charge, many more times when even the person in charge would have said no, they'll say yes because they know that if they say no, you're not going to have an attitude. You're good same way because at all times, the spirit of peace Submission, humility, long-suffering, temperance, self-control, love, and power is always the one that is in charge of both of you. And as long as that is always where the complete submission is to the ultimate one in charge, then your family and everything around you will always be large. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope that you were blessed and encouraged this morning. Praise God. Um, <laughs> as usual, that was not my intended message, but God just went the way that he did. And I'm sure that there are at least one person who really truly needed to hear this this morning, either to make adjustment to your situation that is existing or to prepare you for your situation that is coming. It happens. It, it is for your office. It is for your family. 
it is for your marriage it is for every element of life and if you follow that principle of understanding it will produce ladies you can be in charge but when you're in charge seek to operate from the place of control sister Raquel you're in class you're leading boys you're leading men never let the men feel that they are subservient or submitted to women never let them feel that way because then you'll create a nation of weak men a nation of men that can't lead that can't be husbands that can't be fathers be in charge as teacher but raise men with control raise men by control if you have to boss them up and tell them what to do and and they become they grow up as young men feeling that they need to have a woman tell them what to do they will never be able to fulfill their purpose unless they are delivered and as a woman of god as a as a as a woman of god ladies you do not want god to have to deliver somebody from the spirit you placed on them not a woman of god that's oof that's so wrong can you imagine a child of god someone has to be delivered from what a child of god put on them no no that's that that's wrong so we have to understand the principles of what is at stake here as a woman of god you are in charge but remember you function from the place of control control is the foundation in charge is the roof without the foundation of control the roof has no value it leaks the slightest wind blow it off it is not firmly placed on because control is not in place amen control first and everybody from that control will know who is in charge but if you have to tell them who is in charge if you have to show them who is in charge like a man saying you know I'm a man I am a man you're not trying to convince anybody else only yourself that means you don't know the foundation of masculinity is not established in you so you have to beat your chest and say I'm a man and the same with being in charge if you have to say I am in charge I am in charge then you're really not in charge something else or someone else is so you don't have to prove that you're in charge just demonstrate that you're in control and you'll win the person's soul amen praise God thank you so much hallelujah for listening to my ranting 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 I hope that somebody was blessed by this today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I ask you as we close to please read uh, 1st John chapter 1 1st John chapter 1 from verse 1 to the end it's um, it's only a few verses as a matter of fact I am I am I'm not happy that it is so short because there's some of you that can read this in 10 seconds the way it's short but um, we're gonna be looking and exegesing first John chapter 1 um, for uh, maybe one or two days this week but you know how God goes with us because I thought I was gonna go into some of it this morning and here we are at the end of devotion and I haven't even touched it but please read in advance first John first John chapter 1 um, as we look at uh, what we confess how we confess and what confession actually really means and is in the Bible hallelujah amen so first John chapter 1 please read that first John chapter 1 not John chapter 1 but first John chapter 1 amen so first Peter then first John hallelujah chapter 1 thank you so much for joining us this morning God is a good God yes he is thank you sister Karen why well, you are a real administrative assistant you're quick on the draw sister Arterine as well praise God thank you guys first John chapter 1 please read that I think it's 9 or 10 verses maximum so that's an easy knockoff read it as many times as you can and seek the Lord for revelation 
until we meet up and begin to um, exegese it together so that we can get additional revelations. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your encouragement, your word of power, your word of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, your word of peace and grace and mercy. Thank you, O Holy One of Israel, that none of your word that you have spoken this morning will fall to the ground, will come up and then be choked off, uh, but will find fertile soil in our lives and, be, and manifest for your grace and for your mercy to be extended to others and to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that you will sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now. May they be to our bodies health and strength, prosperity and good success in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the, the, the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup, he blessed it and took a sup when he said, Drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, as we say thanks again for joining us this morning, some of you, especially those in Jamaica, are on holidays. Uh, today is a holiday here in Jamaica. And, um, you know, you would think that, okay, so it's a holiday, so it's time to rest. No, it's a holiday, which means we do devotion and then rest after. You have, you, you have nowhere to go and nothing to do, so you can go right back to bed afterwards. Amen? And then wake up later and do some chores and make a nice breakfast. So a holiday is a good day to have a powerful devotion, even longer than normal, because you don't have to go rush out to work as normal. But the other persons who are in different continents, different places in the world, they still need their blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. In Colombia also. Oh, wow. Cool. Hallelujah. Blessings to you, Laura, in Colombia. And have a happy holiday. Holiday today. Enjoy it, girl. Um, go to the beach if you can. Hallelujah. I hear Colombia has some nice beaches as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. So thank you all for joining us this morning. Let us raise your hands for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus loves you and we love the whole owner too. God bless you. God bless you. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade, I'm Rowan Wade saying have a wonderful, super califragilistic, espialidocious day God's way. Amen. Please remember to do something good for someone today as you are able to. Be a blessing in any way that you can because the Lord's demonstration in us and through us is that we go about doing good deliberately. Amen. Love you guys. Have a good one. Bye. You are great. <laughs> Sister Karen, you are funny. Yes. Almighty. Oh,